Well, the positive points of this Avanti I got was uh, someone did do a pretty good uh, replacement of the exhaust system on it. But I did uh, well, have to rework the exhaust uh, pipes on it because I uh, left out the, what, the heat damper off the intake manifold, uh, off the exhaust manifold. So uh, I had to rework things a little bit. But one of the, look at here's one of the studs. And uh, I chased it with the thread because I can see it was kind of bad shape. But it's still, it's stripped out. Oh, maybe throw up, could have threw up, but. Uh, got a little bit uh, spiritual again, <laughs> praise the Lord. Hey, boy, I took some heat and tried a few times with uh, just vice grips in that really tough quarters trying to use vice grips. is really up on the vehicle without taking off the exhaust manifold. Oh, what a great feeling that t started to came, come. That kept working and I got it out. Yay, that was a big deal. All that said, yay, so I got another stud. Uh, these are original Studebaker uh, hangers, pretty good shape. In fact, I can see some of the original black paint on there and some of that red primer they used in the factory. And fear Studebaker, if, if uh, you can tell if they haven't, they're pretty. If they've had a pretty good uh, storage of their life, because uh, this is where they thread in. They actually thread into the frame on these. The frames are fr the frames are so thick that they're actually uh, drilled and tapped. Now this is an original, one side didn't have original bolts, the other side is original, and uh, one of them was stripped in the frame. No big deal, just put a nut on the back side. So they're in pretty good shape, I'm just going to clean them up, I already did, give them a shot. Black. Here's the other thing, if you, uh, if you take off, uh, if anybody's ever done this, when you try to rework a used uh, muffler clamps, a good shape yet, but sometimes you take them off, they're kind of sprung, see that? It's pretty frustrating when you put it back together. Something I've done, just put a couple nuts on there and squeeze them down. You, gotta come, you don't want to overdo it, then you got to widen them, stretch them. Uh, uh, little, oh, geez, I, mm, man, that's a good plant. Let's just go there as well. Let's go straight up and a little more. Remember, straight up and a little more. Oh, and there it was. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Isn't that nice? I hope that you're seeing what I've been doing here. Well, that's how I do that. Started to turn the engine over to adjust my valves at 26,000. Here's this noise, like something rubbing on the flywheel or echoing through the oil pan. I was got freaking out, thinking maybe I something I might have messed up putting the transmission... Uh, stalling it and I got thinking about the starter so my 400 hour starter I loosened it up and uh, it turns out that the, the gear was uh, engaged out just a, just enough so it's rubbing on the flywheel when I turn the engine over and I measure my old gear he gave it back and measures up the same as my the new one he replaced but for some reason that gear hangs out a little bit uh, which I was happy to see, see it was something to do with the starter at least. So I got to deal with that. Either I, I hate it. I like it just right flush uh, with the where it bolts on. But I guess I could put a might try to put a couple of washers to space it out a little bit, or take it back and see what he's uh, whether it's something he can alleviate this problem. You know, 400 hours. I, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty reputable, but I wonder why it hangs out just a little more than the old one. Yeah, I did see on YouTube uh, some guy, uh, I'm going with this word, I didn't bother looking it up. He uh, said 26,000 on the intake and exhaust. It seems like when I drove it, it did seem kind of clattered a little bit when it was cold, then warmed up and was better. So I just checked them out, and they all uh, look pretty good. And, uh, I only had one, I actually changed a little bit. And I hate you have to have a little finesse when you're doing this. I don't like adjusting valves. I did this, did this on my '63 vet, which has solid lifters. You got to get just right. What does it? Sounds like a lot of clatter, but still you know, slides in there nice and easy. I can't seem to put much any pressure on it. So the all seem pretty good. I think they're just noted for when they're cold, they make a little they clatter a bit. So I'm not going to mess with those anymore. I say I adjusted one a little, but the next thing I'm going to uh, embark on here, which you might feel is a little bit over the top, is my nice black enamel 
uh, heavy duty duty masons. Uh, uh, I cleaned up my plugs. They were new, uh, but I never painted them when I first got the vehicle. I didn't, just because it prevents any kind of rust. And I'm up over here by the Studio Baker Hawk. Poor old girl. Oh, <laughs> what a dope. That was a big deal. <laughs> and as I, I think I stated before, my uh, for my the front bumper. Yeah, it was a little rough. It was bent on us. So I did, broke down. I forgot. I think the new one was like, it was 60 some dollars. <clears throat> but I'm going to paint the, where that fresh metal is again. Just so you know it doesn't, through the years, start rusting, maybe bleed a little bit. Never like any fresh metal, just subject, subject to the elements. Because, and the paint's not taken, see it? It means there's a little bit of oil or some impurity there. Yeah, you can see here what it's like, what, what they call... There it is. The paint, they call that fish eye. Which means there's a little oil or something is on the metal. But I washed them off with gas. Okay, that looks good. Let that kind of dry. And we'll get it through the quick there. I am running across a couple of issues with these... Uh, of this uh, Avanti, of some of the other Avanti restorators have uh, come across this. I, uh, I tighten the rear left and right side nuts from the transmission to the cross member and I have the front motor mounts are not tightened down yet. Look at this, there's like a slack here. Look at that. The engine is not resting. That's probably a good wiggle in a a good uh, eighth or a quarter of an inch just slides in there. Look at that. See that? But then when I go down underneath and loosen the driver's side nut, that will drop down and rest onto the motor mount. And these motor mounts are brand new. Though on the right side, the engine weight is resting on the, uh, the motor mount like you, you should think with all that weight. I'm down underneath the vehicle. And then I'm going to loosen this nut. And then we'll go back up above and I'll show you what I'm trying to relate to you. Now, after I've loosened that nut on the cross member, and you, and you try to put this putty knife in there, look at it, see? Now the engine uh, is resting down on the motor mount. Not a little space on this side yet. Who would think that uh, the weight of this engine and transmission is... I have no idea. It's, well, what, five to 700 pounds? I don't know the combination of them. So, while I was pondering that dilemma, because I feel like, wow, if I tighten these all up, that means it is actually, the one motor mount was broke. Does that mean that there's, that it's pulling up on that rubber and, and it's going to break it after a while? So, while I was pondering that, then I discovered down here, see the steering, uh, control arm, whatever you want to call it, it's rubbing on the front pulley right here. I think I can see where some of the paint is, is, is scraping off of the... So, there you go. I was wondering if anybody else ran into these issues. So, I guess what I'm going to do with a lot of thought, I'm going to try to jack the engine up a couple inches. And that's why I think Goober and Gober, Gober and Goober, put those washers between the rubber motor mounts and the engine uh, mount but they were just just regular whatever size washers they were they weren't very big so I think I got good selections of big washers that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to find some real big washers that I hope they're about the same size as the washer that's bonded to the rubber so I'll have a better uh, surface to surface. My vehicle can't be the only one that was like this. I wonder if that's in any of the Sudebaker restoration uh, concerns or has anybody ran into this issue before. I know this car's never been wrecked. Hey uh, Rochester, would you uh, help me find us? I need to find some flat washers for the spacers, the motor mounts. Yeah boss, I help you out there. Saving these washers for many years, quite a Pretty rusty, but they're a bad storage. 
Member Boss, it's got to be a three inch hole, about two inches across, to meet the, match the motor mount. Uh, well, thank you for your input there, Rochester. They're pretty rusty, but I know I can find a few of them. We're going to clean them up, try to figure out just how much thickness we want on top of the motor mount. Well, Rochester, I've made my selection. Going through a first, like what? Through this. <laughs> It's tough to find a 3 8 hole washer that's two inches in diameter. So I found actually one one here, which was okay. So I found six of them that just about to add up the same thickness. Most of them are, uh, I think, 7 16 hole, if that makes sense. Yeah, so I put them up, up flat up against the glass, took my little ruler. Syracuse bearing, love this little guy. Gonna raise it just under a half inch. So I, I think by uh, putting these spacers in uh, and the motor mounts, uh, when you alter something, sometimes it alters something else. So I think we're safe raising the engine up a half inch. I think that'd make enough for clearance. The front motor mounts at least have some uh, weight on the right front, and also uh, bring it up. Uh, so the front uh, steering control arm, I'll call it, will uh, nicely pass underneath the front pulley. Now my next big concern is, geez, I hate to get the cherry picker back out here. But, uh, I gotta try to raise the front of this engine enough. There's enough threads there on the motor mount, if you can see it here without me poking it, pointing it all the way down in there. Um, I can raise the engine enough to slide these washers. Of course, I gotta clean them up a little bit more. I paint them. If I could slide those in there, oh, that'd be great. But ew, should I jack up on the front pulley? It's pretty heavy duty. That'd be around the crank. <laughs> or should I jack it up uh, from the oil pan? Which uh, I don't think I'll damage anything either. Do a little thinking on that yet. Well, I uh, found my selection of candidates for uh, washers for to do my motor mount. Just face them. Very excited about them. I did end up cleaning them and then acid soaking them instead of sandblasting, then painted them. You know, you'll never see them in there. So I'm excited about that. This is a very useful tool. Um, ice pick I've used for a lot of uh, things. It's hard to find a, a green handle, wood handled uh, uh, household utensils are kind of collectible. Got her at a yard sale. Anyhow, so. Um, and I've decided I'm going to jack the front of the, I'm going to put this piece of pine along a series of bolts on uh, each side towards the front. And then I'm going to put my floor jack and hopefully push up one side at a time with the hopes that these are going to slide in those uh, in, in there and then let the, down through the bolt and then up through the motor mount. That's the theory anyway. I'm finally uh, pleased with the completion of installing my rear bumper. And I say, and, uh, <laughs> I belong to the Avanti Bumper Club, because I'll tell you, that was quite a, quite a bit of uh, adjustment and uh, thought putting this back together. And on top of that, I, was, I say I had one bracket that was uh, incorrectly uh, bent at, uh, at uh, Studebaker, which uh, caused me some grief. So... Actually, it's all uh, within uh, an eighth of an inch, uh, as I went around and measured it. And it was no small undertaking getting those two bolts in view from here. I found this uh, particular wrench of my menagerie of wrenches, which saved the day, because it's really tight up behind the, the back side of those bolts way up in there. And as I stated earlier, I did a, get an assortment of these rubber shims. Some are eighth and the other is a quarter and I found that uh, that's what I used on the outside and the bolt was long enough that I put a quarter inch one on the inside. I hated to put that bracket right up against fiberglass so I have an eighth, eighth inch on the back side and a quarter and an eighth on the outside. Seemed to have everything lined up pretty good with that thickness. I'm going to uh, jack up the left uh, side of the engine to uh, get them washers in the motor mount. Here's my nice piece of pine, just about the right length. Uh, remember those Jane Fonda workout tapes? Well, we're going to show you the 
Briggs Garage and Restoration uh, workout. Hey, you're working on restoring your vehicle, actually, is good exercise. Crawling like this keeps your shoulders limbered up. And you try to tell my therapist that. I do these exercises every day. Tighten these up here. One, two. <laughs> Cam shafts. Oil pads. Motor mouth. Here you go. a little bit. Oh, boy. So I got to go up above and take a look, though. Though I could do this. Boy, that's really good. So it's a nice workout. And there again, my cardboard works nice. It gives you a little, I, for years I wanted a cement floor for a creeper I've been saving for years. Now that I got a cement floor, I found the creeper just robs me of space a few inches. Actually, a cardboard works nice. Yeah, it's getting a little dirty. I get about time. I try not to walk on it. Let's see how those motor mount washers go in. Just jack up enough to slide them in. With the aid of my ice pick, as a pointer, which was rumored to have belonged to a local gangster. Uh, Rochester and I uh, found a couple appropriate washers for each side in our washer archives. They were a nice diameter. And there was enough threads, fortunately, on the motor mounts to, to accommodate those and uh, pretty much uh, full uh, width of the nut on the top threads. So uh, I think we achieved our goal there. I think I'll live it up and use a nice fresh piece of cardboard. You're so cheap, Mr. Benny. Now cut that out. Anyhow, so as you can see between the pulley and there's, now we have a, it's like a nice little space there between the pulley and uh, steering control arm uh, assembly. So I'm... I like that. I might yet replace these rear rubber mounts from the cross member to the transmission or the bell housing. Uh, they were in good shape, but they do look kind of squashed and hardened. It doesn't look like too big a deal. I'm going to order a couple of those and uh, replace them. Of course, I'm hoping that doesn't jack the back end up uh, enough so it. Uh, disrupts what we've just accomplished. That said, I think I'll take a little time out after my Briggs Garage and restoration workout.